Okay, uh, cattle also have eye problems, and mostly it is pink eye, which is more bovis. Okay, uh, the organism itself is rather difficult to culture. It's very uh, labile. It dies really easily, and some of the microbiologists will talk about needing to do the cultures cow side. Uh, and that's literally, you take the swab from the cow, you walk over and you streak the, uh, the auger right there on the farm. Uh, otherwise, if you try to transport that swab, there's a fair chance it may culture negative because uh, it's died in the meantime. But luckily, pink eye is pretty characteristic and it's the uh, number one disease affecting the eye in cattle. Uh, it'll start off as fuzziness, uh, develop into an ulcer, and some of the worst ones will rupture uh, <coughs> where it's eroded all through the ulcer. And if you see any of these cows uh, that have like a central pink area, almost like a little volcano sticking out of their eye, a raised pink area, that is actually the iris that has prolapsed uh, through the ruptured cornea, and the sight in that eye has been lost. Okay. Uh, <coughs> luckily, we have some systemics. Uh, we have some, not all of the injectable oxytecs carry a label indication, but there are some. Draxin carries a label indication. There have been studies showing uh, cefcufur and fluorophenicol. Uh, <coughs> are effective uh, on this when you use extra labely, and that would fit. More Excella doesn't have a lot of resistance problems, unlike a lot of our gram negatives. It's a non-enteric. Uh, worst case scenarios, or if it's not More Excella, you can go to subconjunctival injections and topicals. Topicals, the vitiricin is uh, an antiseptic. It's more or less a, a type of modified Dakin solution, but it's a lot uh, gentler. Uh, unfortunately, it's unapproved, uh, <coughs> so, uh, and we have no firm data. But you'll see it, you'll see Tylosin um, powder to go in the eye, a variety of things marketed for this. I think those are ancillary for mild cases, mostly it's systemic. Uh, Subconj. Uh, Procaine pen has been used uh, with the understanding that you have to have esterases in the tears to break the penicillin away from the procaine to be active, but there, that seems to be the case. So in regular ophthalmology, they'll more commonly use uh, sodium or potassium pen injected subconjunctively. Uh, in food animals, cattle, they'll sometimes use procaine. Uh, Clindamycin has been written up as showing some effectiveness. Uh, the biggest one for years was genomycin injected. Again, you don't want a corneal ulcer because the genomycin will uh, possibly penetrate uh, into the anterior chamber and cause you problems, but it's, it's a big one. Now, kind of the thing is, you know, we're not supposed to use aminoglycosides in food animals. So I'm supposed to tell you not to do that, but you're putting like a quarter cc uh, in that eye subconjunctively. And the odds of a quarter cc of genomycin ever causing you a residue problem were like uh, infinitesimal. Uh, <coughs> so it could be used. The way this is done, and, and the benefit, the reason for going subconj is uh, that it, it provides about two days of uh, antibiotic concentration in the eye through the tears without the frequent uh, topical medication that you would have to do TID or QID otherwise. And the way you do this is you restrain the cow in the head gate, pull her head around, lock it to one side, and you're going to come in here with lidocaine and do a local uh, um, palpebral nerve block uh, right to the side. Uh, <laughs> There's a little ridge you can feel and the, the nerve runs through that. And the reason you do that is if uh, you'll see you cannot open the eyelids in, in a cow that doesn't have that nerve block. They have extremely strong eyelid muscles. Uh, <coughs> so you do that so you can open the eye, apply topical, 
uh, to anesthetize the surface of the eye and then use your uh, antibiotic with a really small gauge needle and put about a quarter, a big eye, you might get half a cc uh, in as a little bleb under, and this is the bulbar conjunctiva. The palpebral conjunctiva is on the top, it's at the eyelid. You're doing this right on the eye um, <coughs> there. And you want to use a small gauge needle. Uh, they wondered how the antibiotic got into the tears and they did a neat little study where they um, took antibiotic and this was one way they did it, the conventional way. The other way was they went through the skin <laughs> and into the conjunctiva without making a hole in the orbit, okay? So the entry was strictly through the skin and sub-Q. And in that case, they found absolutely no antibiotic if they did that. But if they did the conventional, there was plenty of antibiotic in the tears. And the thought is that the uh, antibiotic leaks through that small injection site. So you don't want to use a big needle. You want to use a really small gauge and probably no bigger than a 25 gauge needle when you do this. Now, <coughs> if they have corneal ulcers, individual animals may need additional support to prevent rupture while you're addressing that. Um, typically not a herd scenario, but definitely an individual animal scenario. Uh, the most, but I shouldn't say benign in terms of, of treatment, not necessarily benefit, is to put an eye patch over the eye. Uh, and this is just a cloth patch that you apply glue and you put it over the eye. And really all you're doing there is protecting it from sunlight and flies. Uh, but mild cases, you'll see uh, farmers do that. More commonly, if you're going to do it, uh, you'll probably do either a tarzarathy, a third eyelid flap, or a conjunctival flap. And uh, tarzarathy means you sew the eyelids together. So uh, it's a temporary thing, but you, again, you have the uh, eyelids uh, numb from a local anesthetic and you literally run uh, suture between the top and the bottom eyelids and just sew them together. And what you're doing, the eyelid is providing pressure support against that ulcer to prevent it from rupturing. That's probably the, the, my least favorite <coughs> one I used to do a lot, uh, our third eyelid flaps. And if this is the medial part of the eye, Back underneath there, there'll be a third eyelid that has a little uh, strip of cartilage on it. And I would go in on uh, the lateral side, go under the, through the skin and under the lid, come across, hook through that cartilage, come back underneath and exit. And oftentimes I'd put a little piece of IV tubing that the suture went through as a stent. And then I'd pull that eyelid across and tie it with a temporary knot. Uh, and again, the third eyelid is providing uh, mechanical support uh, to prevent that ulcer from rupturing. Also, it's providing better tear coverage, which may help as well. The thing I liked about the third eyelid <coughs> is that uh, I could take down uh, the knot and lower it and uh, see how the ulcer was progressing and then pull it back up to look at it again. You do have to make sure your suture doesn't slip though because you don't want the suture actually rubbing across the eye. Now the optimum one that an ophthalmologist will do in a small animal, and I suppose if they ever saw a cow they would do it, uh, but most of uh, the, these go through practitioners. But the ideal thing is a conjunctival flap and what you're doing there is you're taking this bulbar conjunctiva and uh, making a uh, rectangular cut, leaving it attached at one end, and you're freeing up, dissecting this into a little flap, and you bring that down and sew the edges of the conjunctiva to the edges of the ulcer. So that's a way of uh, not only supporting it, but supplying direct blood supply to the cornea that's damaged. Uh, <coughs> so that's your ideal, but it takes a little skill. 
uh, to do that, and you have to have a, normally this is done under complete general anesthesia in small animals. Okay, so that's a little bit of a limitation there. Uh, after it heals, uh, you simply uh, snip off uh, the conjunctival flap next to the eye, and this is already healed. You've kind of sewn up the edges. Uh, and then you have that little piece of epithelium growing on the cornea that will eventually scar down into a little white um, blemish. Okay, but uh, mostly systemic therapy in cattle, worst case scenarios, um, subconjunctal injections with ancillary supports for the ulcers. 